Alright, uh, thank you for your patience. So let's proceed to the topic 2 about voltaic cell or galvanic cell. So we will have this um, content about lecture 2. First, we have to define voltaic cells. Then we have examples about voltaic cell or this is more about um, explaining the working mechanism of um, your galvanic cell. How does it really work? Okay. So let's define some terminologies. Electrochemical cell, it is a system consisting of two half cell reactions connected in a in such a way that chemical reactions either use or generate an electricity. Okay, voltaic cell or galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell in which a spontaneous reaction generates an electricity. Okay. A battery, a device in which chemical energy is changed into electrical energy. So basically, your voltaic cell or galvanic cell is also a battery. Okay? So here's the steps on how to draw or to sketch or represent a voltaic cell or a galvanic cell. First, we need to draw a sketch of the cell, labeling, labeling the anode, the cathode, the direction of the electron flow, and then write the half-cell reaction that takes place at the anode and the cathode. So, always remember that voltaic cell or galvanic cell has a reaction going on in it, which is a redox reaction. Okay, And then... We need to write a balance equation of the cell reaction and then write an abbreviated notation for the cell. So how do you how do you write an abbreviated notation for the cell? So in these notations, your anode will be written on the on the left and the cathode will be written on the right. And then yung isang guhit na to, that is the phase boundary. The long guhit na to, that is the salt bridge. Okay? And then, to better understand this, let's have the working mechanism of a galvanic cell. Okay? Alright. So, in this figure, you can see two beakers, right? Or two containers here two containers that has metals in it so in here we have a copper metal this is a copper metal and this is a zinc metal so it is soaked or immersed in a solution so your copper metal is immersed in a solution which is copper sulfate copper sulfate and then your zinc is immersed in a solution which is zinc sulfate okay and just like a battery so this is voltaic cell but it works like a battery okay for example we have a battery okay this is the positive side of the battery. This is the negative side of the battery. So if we connect wire and have a light bulb here to these sides, positive and negative, we will have would have generated or we have um, operated the light bulb to light, right? But um, please take note that in any battery, the electrons flow from the negative side okay, to the positive side. So whenever there's a flow of electrons, okay, there is electricity. Okay, so ganun lang yun. 
So if there, there is a flow of electrons, so that's why this light bulb is um, operating. Okay, that's how, this is how also a voltaic cell works, but um, we go deeper on how the chemical reaction occurs in a battery. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> you, you already know that these metals, zinc and copper, are immersed in a solution, right? The zinc has Im has been immersed in a solution zinc sulfate and copper sulfate naman sa copper natin. And uh, your copper here, or your zinc, dito muna tayo sa zinc. So your zinc metal, it loses an electron. So there is a tendency that, that zinc donates an electron. And copper naman has a high tendency that it, ha it um, accepts an electron. Okay? So in this anode part, since electron has been donated or electrons has been loose, okay, or lost, that is oxidation. And whenever <clears throat> this side has gained an electron, this is reduction. Okay, so to chemically or to to represent this in an equation mathematically, so zinc here, zinc solid yan metal, it donates an electron. So naging zinc two plus sha have two electrons here. Okay. And dito sa reduction naman natin, since it accepts an electron, okay, your copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, since it has accepted an electron from the zinc, it becomes copper solid. Okay? So, in here, these two half-cell reactions you can clearly see if it is reduction or oxidation, right? Since oxidation here, the zinc <clears throat> from the oxidation number of zero, so we have the rule that if it is a chemical, it is, it is if it is a, a uh, elemental chemical, okay, like zinc, it has no oxidation number so that is zero and if we have an ion kung ano man yung kanyang charge that is the oxidation number here okay so it becomes from zero so the oxidation number increases so that is oxidation Dito naman sa ating uh, reduction, the oxidation is from 2 plus to 0. So it has reduced. So that's why that is reduction. Or just remember that Leo the lion says ger. So Leo, ger, loss of electron is oxidation. Gain of electron is reduction. So always remember that. Okay. So now we know which part is the oxidation and which part is the reduction. <clears throat> let's move on on how uh, or further. Let's move on further on the mechanism of this, this voltaic cell. Okay, since we know that the 
copper here, okay, it forms solid copper, right? Whenever there is a, a flow of electron from the negative side to the positive side from here to here, okay, through the wires, of course, um, copper ions from the solution, since this is copper sulfate, uh, solution, aqueous solution, okay? So, since meron na dating C, Cu2 plus dito, it is very attracted to the electrons na binigay ng ating zinc, okay? So, that's why, para mag-accelerate siya papunta dun sa negatively charged ion because, of course, negative, uh, opposite attracts, right? This is positive, Copper 2 plus is positive and electron is negative. So it accelerates towards the uh, electron here and it forms copper solid. Okay, it forms a copper solid here. So, dito naman sa ating zinc, since um, ito ay metal natin, okay, and from the zinc na solid siya, it donates an electrons, kaya nagiging zinc 2 plus siya. Okay? Nagiging zinc 2 plus. So, ang nangyayari dito, ang ating anode or yung zinc mismo ay nagiging mapayat or nauubos siya. Okay? So, portion of this metal is becoming an ion. Okay? because it loses an electron from these, the solid state of zinc to ion state of zinc ay nagiging ion. So, nagiging, uh, it loses a mass. Okay? Okay? A loss of mass. Okay, dito naman sa ating cathode or the copper, since the ion that is readily available from the solution attracts the negatively charged electron. It becomes solid. Ang nagiging itsura ng ating metal dito ay lumalaki. So, in here, your copper cathode, it has, it gains mass. So, ganun na. Hanggang, uh, hanggang sa time na sobrang or wala na ito at ito sobrang laki naman so it is when yun na yung time na ang galvanic cell or voltaic cell natin ay hindi na pwede kasi wala nang transfer of electron since wala na tayong zinc diba? wala nang transfer of electron from negative to the positive so parang dun na expired ang ating battery dito okay so I hope you understood that Ngayon naman, uh, we, we can see a salt bridge here. Diba? We can see a salt bridge here. Para saan ba yan? Okay? So, that is very important. Kasi, it, um, it prevents the build up of charge sa ating mga solutions. Okay? Kasi, you, you know, or we, I have said that the the current flow from the anode to the cathode or from negative to positive, right? And without the salt bridge, current only flow for a short period of time. Kasi magkakaroon ng build up of charge sa anode natin at copper natin. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Okay, so burayin muna natin ang napakaraming sulat dito. So, uh, you have understood na nag-build up ito ng charge, right? Okay. So, kapag wala itong salt bridge natin, itong positive dito, since that is a uh, cathode, at uh, nag-deliver ang anode ng negative, there will be a, a build up of charge. Ibig sabihin, magiging negative ito. ba? Kasi pumupunta ang electron dito eh. So, nagiging negative. Ngayon naman, dito rin nagiging positive siya. 
which is hindi dapat. Okay? So, um, originally, this is from negative to positive. So, kung naging negative ito, papaganon din siya. Up to the time na parang equilibrium na sila. Equilibrium means there will be no flow of electrons anymore. Okay? There will be no flow of electrons. Kapag walang flow of electrons, we cannot generate an electricity. Okay? So, ang ginagawa ng salt bridge natin, okay, uh, we have a a transfer of ion here. Okay? So, the SO4 ion, it goes to the anode. So, this is an ion, di ba? So, it makes sense. An ion anode. Okay? It goes to the anode here to maintain the negativity of this. Okay? And the Na naman, it is positive. So, this cation goes to the cathode to maintain its positivity. Na para, negative pa rin to, positive pa rin to, and electricity flows from negative to positive. So, there is always flow of um, electron. So, there is generation of electricity. So, ganun yun. So, without the salt bridge kasi, imagine nyo wala yung salt bridge, gagana pa rin itong electrolytics or this galvanic cell natin. Pero, it will only be okay for a short period of time kasi nga may build up of charge. So, hindi na mauubos itong zinc na to, hindi na pwede. Kung baga, di ba ang lifespan ng battery natin dito or galvanic cell natin dito, kapag ubus na ito, di ba? Pero hindi pa, hindi pa nauubos yan, hindi na to pwede. Kasi nag-build up na yung charge natin. So, without the salt bridge, hindi, ma, hindi tatagal ang voltaic cell natin. Okay, so please always remember that. Okay? Okay, so this is the abbreviated notation of this uh, voltaic cell. So, zinc, okay, forms into zinc ion, and then we have the salt bridge here, and then copper 2 ion forms copper, which is solid. Okay, this is solid. So, ganyan yung abbreviated notation. So, you cannot see electrons. You cannot see electrons sa abbreviated notation natin. Okay? So, I hope you understood that. And, um, please stay tuned for lecture part 3. Thank you so much for listening.